Hey, what's up everyone? This is Adriana from today's iPhone and I'm gonna show you a little walkthrough of iOS 4.2.1 on the iPad. So let's get started. Now basically the home screen looks pretty much the same as it did before. Uh, what you've got now is, let's see, when you tap your home button a couple times, you've now got a multitasking dock at the bottom. Now this will work in landscape or in portrait mode either way. Now, this is uh, basically a rundown of all your most recent apps. And like I did just there, when you're here, you just slide over to the right and you get some audio controls. You get um, this new orientation lock, which is used to be handled by the switch that was on the side here. That switch is now um, basically a mute switch. So in order to lock your screen in landscape or portrait, you're gonna tap that button. You've got what is a dimmer for the brightness control on your screen. You've got audio controls and it'll control your built-in iPod application or it'll control Pandora, Slacker. Um, in this case, you've got YouTube right there. That was the last uh, compatible app I had open and that's the app that'll show up there on the right. Here you've also got a volume control. So it's kind of neat having a slider here. Um, of course, you can always control from the side, you still got the hardware buttons and the uh, the volume rocker, and that'll still control your audio. This one down here is a now a mute switch, and when you flip it, this is what pops up. See that little speaker? That's what it does. See that little thing right there, that button? Right next to the audio controls, you've got AirPlay. So if you have an AirPlay enabled, um, like an Apple TV, uh, even the old Airport Express base stations, which is actually what I have right now, you can tap that and choose it. And when you choose it, then you can pipe in um, audio or if it's an Apple TV, you can pipe in video. And uh, let's see, it should work with any of the built-in native apps from Apple. So this is, um, I don't know if you hear that in the hey background. Guys, I am Jake from todaysiphone.com and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the official Lego Harry Potter game. For so obviously if you're in YouTube or another uh, supporting app, then you can just, you can see that little icon right there. You can tap that and choose where you're gonna pipe in your audio. So that was just coming from the speakers that are connected wirelessly. Okay, so you touch the screen to begin. And and that's what it sounds like piping out of the tablet. And it's kind of neat being able to choose which way you're going to go there. So that's one way to do it right from the screen here. Or like I said, you go down to the multitasking bar and swipe to the right. And you've got that button down here as well. Now what double tapping this home button also does is, well, like I said, this is the multitasking bar. You can choose any one of these things. And so let's say you're in your mail app and you're looking at something, um, then you can just double tap your home button and you can choose something else without completely shutting down this app. So I can go into iPod, I can go into pages, etc., and it just goes on and on and on. Now, another very cool thing is app folders. Now, what you're going to get here, or what you've got now, is the ability to group apps into different folders, and you can organize them and move them around. So, let's say, for example, um, I've got something called offline pages here. Let's say I wanted to create a folder with browsers. And that's all you do, you just take it, you hold it until it jiggles, and then you move it on top of another one. And you can change the name that it, that it gives it. You can change this to, I'm gonna change it to browsers. And there you have it. I can add more to it if I want. Just putting it right down on there. Now, if you don't change the name um, and you have a few different apps that are from the same category of the App Store, it's going to default and call it that. So uh, if you have several productivity apps together, then it'll just automatically call it productivity, uh, etc. So that's actually pretty handy and easy to use. And of course, the apps work just like, I'm sorry, the folders work just like the apps and you can just move them around and rearrange them and stuff, which is really neat. So the next thing we're gonna do is 
uh, try to set up my Find My iPhone, or in this case, Find My iPad account. Now, uh, it doesn't come, the app itself doesn't come uh, already preloaded like Game Center does. I mean, the minute you updated your iPad, you notice this new icon show up. It's not like that with the Find My iPhone um, application. You've actually got to go into the App Store and download it. Now, before you do anything, though, what you want to do is set it up in Settings. So, we're going to launch Settings. I'm in my Mail Contacts Calendars application, and I'm going to add an account and you're gonna see here it says mobile me so let's tap that now I can just type in my Apple ID and password or I can create a free Apple ID if I don't already have one um, but I do because you know I buy apps and stuff like that okay so the minute you type that in you get a little window that says the mobile me terms of service have changed well great and let's see what happens after that oh there you go and the terms of service pops up and you can go back, you can go forward, you can agree. I think I'm going to agree. I agree to the MobileMe terms of service. Uh, yes, I do. Agree. Okay. It may take a few moments to update your account. Ooh, actually, it didn't take that long. Okay. And um, so it goes through all of that to register you and now you've got a screen that says find my iPad and I'm going to say Okay, let's turn it on. This enables Find My iPad features, including the ability to show the location of this iPad on a map. Well, okay. I save that. And voila. So now what I do is I go and launch the Find My iPhone, or actually, like I keep saying, it's like Find My iPad, really. But um, I'm going to type in the login that I just put into the settings. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Okay. And I'm signing in. And there you go. And, you know, I don't think I'm going to show you where I am on the map right now, but suffice it to say, you can see maps going on here, and it is actually locating me, which is terrific. Um, I can tap over on the left side here. And uh, let's see, iPad located 21 seconds ago, and that thing just, you know, is terrific. If I have multiple devices, I can put multiple devices in there. Now that I've registered, um, basically how this service works is you need to register a current device, whether it's an iPad, iPhone 4, iPod Touch 4. Um, and once you have an account created using one of those current devices, you can actually add older devices to your account. Next thing we're going to look at is, uh, let's go to Safari and take a look at this snazzy new find text option. They've built this into iOS 4.2.1 as well and it's something new and really handy. If you've ever gone to a website and it's just chock full of like content and you can't find the very thing that actually you were looking for on there, all you got to do is tap on the upper right in the Google field, <clears throat> tap what you're looking for. So let's say I'm looking for, oh, I don't know, um, let's, let's go, oops, let's go with the word page. Now, you used to only have the Google suggestions there. Now you get on this page at the bottom there, you see that? When you tap on that, now it'll show you everywhere your search query shows up on the page. And um, what's neat about this is it's not even just the first instance of it. Um, I can go to next, which is down here on the lower left. When I tap on that, it'll take me to every instance of the, of the word or phrase. And I can change my query down here on the lower right. I could say pages, I could say page bump, I could say page down, whatever I want. And when I'm done, I just tap done and done. And it clears it. So that's how you use find text on the page. Next up is AirPrint. Now, um, you can print text, you can print photos. Uh, the AirPrint functionality only works with certain HP printers right now, but there's more that's in the works. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an HP printer. I can still show you how the settings work and the UI and stuff though, so let's, let's give that a shot. Uh, let's go to photos, and let's say I wanted to uh, print out a picture of this really interesting looking doohickey here. I don't know what that is. My husband took a picture of that. But 
let's see, I tap on the screen and I get these little options up at the top and you see where that little arrow on the upper right is? When I tap on that, I've got a whole bunch of options. Email, photo, assigned to contact, uses wallpaper, print. So I'm going to tap on print and that's where the magic happens. Now if I had like multiple printers that were air print compatible, then I would have like a whole list of things popping up here. No printers found. That's okay. Um, I can do one or two copies or more. I can, you know, uh, hit the print button and it sends it to a print queue. Now, if I want to print more than one picture, then I could go and basically I hit that same little arrow button up top there and I can select multiple ones. I hit the print button that now appears on the upper left and it's the same drill. I select the printer or if you have a default printer set, that's great. Um, that makes life easier and you can do a whole bunch of copies if you want. Now, if you do uh, several different print jobs <clears throat> and they're all in the queue, what'll happen is when you double click your home button and you get your multitasking dock, it, you're going to get a printer print center icon over here on the left. Um, and that's how you would manage or kill a print job if you wanted. And it's all very, very easy to use. And it's not just for photos. Like I've got uh, pages right here and it works for pages as well. Um, now this is not going to work across, there we go, in the wrench right there. This is not going to work across every single application you have. It's pretty much up to the developers to support this or not as they see fit. So obviously pages coming from Apple, it, it, they wanted to have this <clears throat> working as soon as possible. So if, you, if you're a Pages user um, and you don't have the latest update, you're going to want to go grab that, I think. Final thing I'm going to show you today is how to, well, actually it's better if I just show you. I'm in my mail app right now and you see on the upper right there, there's no delete option. Now, why can't I delete messages? Well, you can. It's just now the default is for you to archive. You see that little button there? Now you can archive the messages. It doesn't delete them off your account. It just kind of gets rid of it off the screen here. And it's still um, it's still on the server if you want to go back and search for it. Personally, I prefer to control whether I'm going to delete something or not. So here's how you get rid of that and bring delete back. You want to go back to settings and I'm in mail contacts calendars. So you just tap on the account that this pertains to and I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going to, sorry, block in my email address. Um, one of the options that shows up now is archive messages. I can turn that off. And if I turn that off and I hit done, then when I go back and hey, look at that spiffy multitasking bar here. Um, I'm going to go back to mail and now Hey, there's a the little garbage can icon. Cool, huh? So those are some of the major features that are now um, possible on your Apple tablet. So uh, it's Adriana, and that is a quick walkthrough of iOS 4.2.1 on the iPad. And uh, thanks for watching.